we have to be, I want to share some interesting things about, uh, about uh, uh, Hilbert modular forms, about uh, uh, Hilbert modular forms. Okay, so um, <clears throat> these are going to be uh, uh, generalizations. So this is a generalization. Of uh, this uh, elliptic modular forms, all of as I've seen this in the previous talks, elliptic modular forms. Okay, right. So <clears throat> over here, what we are going to do is um, <clears throat> I'm going to take uh, this uh, uh, upper half plane. Okay, so um, this is the uh, upper half plane. Okay, and I'm going to take uh, n copies of the upper half plane. Okay, so here uh, this h, so this is the, the upper half plane and uh, I'm going to take n bigger than or equal to one here. So the case when n is equal to one, so we get the classical uh, elliptic modular forms. And uh, so what we are going to look is that we are going to look at the, the action of, um, so here, the action of uh, this group SL2R, okay, uh, but n copies of it, action of SL2R, okay, on uh, H, the upper half plane. Yeah, so the upper half plane consists of uh, all points, yeah, uh, so we all know this. So, I mean, that the imaginary part is doesn't touch the, touch the, uh, the real line. Okay, and then uh, so this is the, the thing uh, that we're going to study. Okay, and then out of this study, we'll get the um, uh, things which are the higher dimensional analogs of the, the, uh, the, the modular curve. Okay, and then the, uh, the space of uh, automorphic forms which will sleep on this, and then we'll be defining what. Uh, Hilbert modular forms are, okay? And then uh, we'll look into what um, Hecke operators are and so on, okay? So, so here is a, a rough plan, so a rough outline. Okay. So uh, first we are going to look at, uh, you know, uh, discrete subgroups, a little bit about uh, discrete subgroups of uh, discrete subgroups of uh, of sl to r power of n okay so if n were equal to 1 then i have sl2 uh, r only and then i know that sl2 z is a very nice discrete subgroup there okay and then we look at um, <clears throat> the second is to look at the um, uh, uh, the definition of a cusp form, uh, the definition of cusp, definition. So this will take a lot of time, definition of uh, cusps. And then the third is we'll look at, uh, we'll construct a space on which we'll get very nice uh, functions, okay? And then so that will be automorphic forms. Automorphic forms. Okay, and then we'll maybe um, just uh, formally define what a, what a, what a Hilbert modular form is. Hilbert modular form. Okay, and then we we'll look at uh, we we'll look at uh, the the Hecke operators.
okay and then uh, we try to look at some some examples also okay so this is the uh, the rough outline okay so so let's let's try and um, do uh, <coughs> uh, uh, all these things uh, it's not possible to give um, uh, a course on on this in in such a short time, but uh, whatever it is possible, and whatever I do, uh, whatever I'm comfortable with, maybe I can just present them. So the first one is um, okay. So let's start with uh, discrete subgroups of SL two uh, R. Okay, so this is to start with discrete. Subgroups of uh, SL2R. And so, what are these? These are important to define uh, in the case n is equal to 1. These were important to define uh, elliptic modular forms. Okay. And before we do that, let me just recall for you what the action is. Okay. So, I have this SL2R uh, N. Okay. And it's going to act on. Um, Mm, it's n okay so how is this action done so this this means that there is an action okay and then the action is uh, defined via this so if i pick m a matrix okay here so i'm going to, to say all these things to you so so i write down this uh, this this element m is inside sl2r n okay so it, it's going to have uh, i mean n components and each of those components are, are matrices in themselves Okay, it's going, it's going to act on the, in, in the usual way, okay? It's going to act on the first coordinate of Z, okay? Uh, the second coordinate of, of, of Z, okay? The usual transformation that I have, M, N, uh, and then Z, N here. Okay, so here let me remind uh, for you that this SL2R to the N has the, is given the topology induced from, uh, you know, uh, R n squared. Okay, so here S L uh, two R. So this is an aside. Okay, maybe useful later on. Uh, so this has um, topology induced uh, from like this. Okay, and then um, M is this uh, uh, M consists of these matrices, M1 up to Mn, okay? And uh, so I can also write this down as uh, something like this, A, B, C, D. Okay, so here, remember, so, so, so we are dealing with uh, N coordinates of matrices here, so so I write this down. Uh, uh, so, so here A is equal to um, A1, uh, A2, and so on up to An. And uh, B equals to B1. Yeah. So we do the most uh, easiest and then, uh, I mean, the, the easiest thing. Okay, C is equal to C1 up to, oh, uh, this is B. Okay, and this is CN, okay? And then D is uh, D1 up to Dn like this. Okay, and remember that, uh, so remember that uh, I can write down my M as, uh, I mean, MZ as MZ, okay? so. If I if I if I if I uh, write down this coordinate wise everything coordinate wise then I can also write this down as a z plus b, okay, times uh, this one, c z plus d to the power of uh, minus one. Okay, so minus one is a multiplicative inverse. Yeah, so we are looking looking at the upper half plane. So we can say that this is a, a non-zero, and, and then okay, so. So here, just let me just add that inverse is uh, undefined multiplicatively.
Okay. So uh, what am I saying here? So I'm, I'm saying the following, um, that if I have, uh, uh, say, uh, so let's, let's look at this example here. So, If I look at, um, say, S, L, 2, R, okay, two copies of this acting on the upper half plane, two copies of the upper half plane, then I'm saying that action happens via this one. So you can, you can, you, you, you pick two elements here. So uh, here, if I take Z equals to uh, Z1, Z2. Okay, then the action is happening via this one. So A1, Z1 plus B1 divided by C1, Z1 plus D1, and then A2, Z2 plus B2 divided by C2, Z2 plus D2. Okay, so this is this is the this is the, the, the transformation. Okay, so we're here uh, a one a one a two um, uh, 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 is a b one b two is b c one c two is c and then d one d two is d. Okay, so this is uh, the action. It's it is going uh, to be an element of the uh, uh, x square again. Yeah, each one of these is an element gives us back an element of, uh, of the upper half. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, so often, so we use, so, so this, these notations are useful. So, okay, so I have these notations. Okay. So um, if I have a Z, an element of the uh, HN, then so this S is for sum, okay? So this is equal to sum of all the coordinates, okay? And then uh, here N, okay? N of Z, this is equal to the product of all the conjugates. And then Z N like this, okay? So, um, um, and this is, so this is for all uh, Z belongs to. So we can even do this for as a notation. And this will be this, the, the first one reflects the trace and then the second one is a reflection of the norm of an element. Okay, so the first thing which we um, uh, try to uh, uh, see is to, is to look at the possible um, discrete subgroups of, uh, of SL2 Rn, okay, and for this, uh, this is, uh, yeah, so I have, sub, suppose I have gamma to be a subgroup of um, SL2 R to the N, okay, then uh, this is discrete, okay, so, uh, as in, as in the case when n is equal to one, so if and only if, uh, uh, so the action of gamma on uh, this, okay, x discontinuously, continuously. Okay, so, uh, so so, so, so recall, so, so let me recall for you, uh, so recall. What is the topology on HN? Uh, HN has the topology which is uh, induced from the topology on CN. CN, okay. Yeah. Uh, for the time being, okay. Um, yeah, so this is the test topology which is induced from, uh, from CN. Okay, so, so, so recall that um, uh, discrete means, uh, yeah, so these things are all well known. So discrete means uh, uh, intersection with any complex that is finite, okay? So intersection with any uh, complex that is finite, okay? 
And then uh, this continuous action means uh, this continuous action means um, you know if I have a compact set, so the compact set K, which is inside uh, say h to the power n, then you know this uh, all those m inside comma such that uh, m k uh, intersection with k uh, non empty so this is finite okay this is what a, what a discontinuous section is okay and uh, so you, you just search for the, for the proof okay uh, imitate uh, n equals to one case. Maybe you try to write down uh, 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 this thing, and then we can we can we can discuss this during the discussion session. So we have a discussion session, uh, I think, uh, on, uh, on on Thursday, and then yeah, we, we can discuss it. Okay. So the proof is uh, it's 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 uh, um, it, it it follows. You only have to uh, it follows from the definition. There is um, uh, you know. Uh, it's not not at all difficult. So uh, this is uh, one proposition which is important, and uh, and and why is this important? Because it completely uh, tells us where to look for uh, discrete subgroups of of uh, SL two R to the power of n. Okay, so we we have to look at uh, those subgroups which act discontinuously on uh, h to the power of n. Yeah. So uh, uh, in the face of it, it doesn't it doesn't mean much. Okay, but um, <clears throat> uh, the point is that it does um, say a lot of things. Okay, so now uh, the other thing which is very important, okay, to define elliptic modular forms was the, the, the notion of a cusp. Okay, and then uh, that notion we are going to uh, generalize, uh, okay, in the case when I have this uh, multiple copies of, uh, of the upper half plane. Okay, so. Um, this is uh, I haven't defined for you, but uh, this is we are going to discuss this one. Okay, one infinity for its uh, inside uh, its n for its inside h. Okay, so 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 what I do is uh, you first um, I first have to put an element like this inside uh, the the uh, the, the uh, uh, I mean, in the upper half plane, okay, and for that I, I introduced this um, uh, uh, set called X bar, okay, so where, uh, what is X bar? So X bar equals to uh, H union uh, R bar, and R bar is the extended real, okay, uh, R bar, this is equal to R, union uh, infinity okay and we can we can call this the extended at that uh, upper half plane yeah so this is called the extended upper half plane okay and uh, uh, so far we had action of sl to r n on uh, h to the n, now we are going to extend this and then we extend this in a, in a natural way, just as we have done in the case of, uh, of elliptic modular forms. Um, uh, uh, so here it is, so uh, I have this SL2 R n uh, x on this, okay, so I have this action extended naturally. Okay, so all these things we have seen before. And then <coughs> now I take, so now I take uh, gamma to be 
uh, a subgroup of uh, so this is a subgroup of SL to Rn. Okay, so this is discrete. So 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 this this is a discrete subgroup. Okay, then um, we are going to look at the the uh, uh, so uh, the, the translations of um, of certain elements. Okay, inside inside gamma. Okay, so so I put so this d underline gamma. So what is this? This is uh, all those a inside. Uh, R to the power of n such that you know the transformation uh, the transformation z going to uh, z plus a is in gamma. Okay, so uh, transformations which take z to z plus a, okay, can look like uh, so, so, so. Suppose if my a looks like a one up to a n, so so here, if like say I write a is equal to a one up to a n, uh, then uh, this transformation will look like you know m equals to yeah so i only have to so uh on the first coordinate z1 z1 will be mapped to z1 plus a1 so that is done going to be done by this matrix one a101 okay but uh i mean minus of this also works yeah because uh, the minus one cancels out with the with the minus uh you know of uh, minus one minus uh, a1 z1 so i can have a plus minus here okay plus minus one, uh, a two, zero, one, and so on. So plus minus one, uh, a n zero one. Okay. So my M is going to look like this. Something like this. Hello. This is Rupam. In the previous slide, can you go yeah. back? When you're writing this R union infinity, is R n union infinity? That uh, R bar you're writing? R bar is, yeah, R union infinity. Okay, okay. so this is, you're writing n equal to one case, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. This is for n is equal to one case. Okay, so as Rupam has pointed out, this is um, for the case, uh, okay, so this is. Uh, n equal to one case, okay? And for its n bar, I mean, I take copies of this one. Yeah. Okay, all right. Now, uh, so this, this, uh, this, this, this translation, okay? So this is the, 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 the we can say that this is the, the translation group of, of gamma, okay? So uh, T, underline gamma so this is called the the translation of of gamma okay and uh, <clears throat> as you can see here that uh, my my, my, my uh, the the condition for for t bar uh, the, uh, the underline uh, demands that um, this transformation M is inside gamma, right? So it forces us to uh, to see that this A1, A2, and so on. So all these groups, they, they have to be elements inside, um, uh, you know, uh, inside gamma. So which means that uh, uh, since uh, this this A1, A2, and so on up to A n, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, and, and since gamma is discrete, it forces this uh, T underline gamma also to be discrete. Okay. So from here it follows that. So therefore, d bar gamma. So this is uh, uh, a discrete subgroup. Of gamma. Ah, no, not of gamma, but uh, yeah. So discrete subgroup of Rn. Yeah. 
discrete subgroup of, of R. Okay, so once I have this discrete subgroup of Rn, yeah, so therefore we know that, so, so therefore I know that D bar of, of gamma, so this will be isomorphic to uh, Z to the power K for some K, yeah, so this is going to be a finitely generated uh, abelian group, okay, and it has no torsion elements, so therefore it will look like this. for some one uh, less than k, less than n, like this. And what is important for us is going to be especially the case when uh, the, the, the translation group is equal to n, okay? So it is important because that will give us this, um, I mean, allow us to define the cusp at infinity, okay? So also recall this, uh, this notion of, uh, of a parallel, fundamental parallelopiped, okay? So uh, the set P, uh, uh, so P, which is defined by uh, such that uh, uh, Z equals to summation, maybe I can write this as X, okay? And then reserve the, the Z when I have the upper half plane. Okay, so x. Okay. Uh, j equals to 1 to n. Okay, and then I have here dj lying between uh, 0 and 1. Okay, uh, this is called the, the fundamental Parallelo biped, okay, of gamma uh, here. Okay, so here, here these DJs. Uh, so I have these edges coming from coming from uh, coming from yeah. So these edges come from uh, come from this T underline gamma. So this is the one that corresponds to T underline gamma. So so in case even if I if I leave out this. Uh, I mean gamma, okay. Um, uh, please keep in mind that when I have, uh, uh, when I simply write T underline, uh, it means it refers to this T underline gamma, okay. There is a discrete subgroup uh, lurking in the background, okay. And then the, the way I have defined it, so zero less than or equal to DJ is less than or equal to one. So it immediately implies that at this P, okay. So this is a compact. In a complex subset of uh, R to the power of n. Okay, I have this complex subset of R to the power of n, and uh, uh, if I translate it, a plus b. Okay, and then you know I take my a inside this discrete subgroup, then it covers it covers. Covers R to the power of n. So I have a, a compact subset, okay, and then I'm translating it in, in all possible ways by using this discrete subgroup, okay, <laughs> T, T underline. Okay, so um, the definition of a cusp at, uh, at infinity, so this is going to be an, an, uh, an abstraction of the um, definition of a cusp in the uh, when I have the action of uh, SL two on the the upper half plane, okay. So 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 we need two conditions. Um, uh, sir, uh, uh, so in the so uh, in the definition of the set P, so you have defined that uh, set of all element X belongs to R n. So uh, that means you are for a uh, so first you are fixing this point a one a two a n, and then you are defining this set P, right? Right. And uh, so what you are saying, this is a fundamental parallel of, uh, of uh, T gamma, but here yes. in the T gamma set, uh, this set is, uh, this is not a single point. There are so many points like uh, collection of points, mm -hmm. A1, A2, A, 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 to satisfy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so in that way, uh, so it is, uh, is it true that this set is equal for any point a1 a2 a n belongs to t gamma uh, no 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 yeah so 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 thanks for pointing this out i should have i should have mentioned this one 
Okay. Sir, so, uh, well, I mean. Uh, uh, hello. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, but uh, but your gamma is isomorphic to I mean the the discrete subgroup as you said it is isomorphic to Z to the K, right? Yes. So uh, I mean uh, what I was thinking is that uh, if you took the basis uh, this E K I mean actually I'm quite puzzled wh what why is this E? Okay, okay, please proceed. Sorry, no, no. Uh, is is uh, is it okay? Yeah, no, actually, what I was thinking is that, uh, sir, um, we generally in the fa first few lectures we saw we quotient age by gamma and we are getting modular curves and they are the projective projectivization we are introducing infinities and all those things. But here, mm -hmm. sir, in algebra, I mean, geometrically, wh what will be the quotient of age in closure modulo that gamma n? Yeah, I mean, so how do you view that. the cusp? Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, so we have to come to that. We have to come to that. Uh, we have to. Um, so, in in this case, it's not so. Uh, uh, well, it's kind of uh, kind of straightforward. Okay, but uh, I mean, um, yeah. I mean, it, it it's not so straightforward. Yeah, I mean, uh, I could have, I could have some, yeah. So uh, we, we have to give here, a meaning. Sir, but there also I had the same, I mean, what I was saying, I mean, you said it is gamma is isomorphic to Z to the K. You have not said gamma equal isomorphic to Z to the N, right? Then yeah, how yeah, you yeah. guarantee that you want to A and you will have? No, but then Who how will you, you take about? the uh, product XI, I mean, this AJ will run from Z1 to K. And but yeah, on the yeah, other yeah, end, yeah. X so, will so, so run. Let me, let, let, let me collect this. Is, is this your, your, your question? No, but then X is inside Rn. So that's why I couldn't yes. figure out. Then how will you so multiply? So all those here? X which I can which I can write like this. So um, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, what, what is the confusion? Can you repeat your question once no, again? No, no, no. Okay, okay. I mean, it is for any K, not N. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, <clears throat> so let us let us make this. Okay. So if uh, k equals n, okay, then this uh, t bar t underline gamma. So this is a lattice in. Yeah, does this remove your, uh, yeah, so maybe this removes some of your doubts. Okay, so, um, so uh, to define a cusp, okay, so, so, so we first have to uh, define uh, uh, what the cusp is, okay, so that we can define these things like the analog of the, of the modular curve, okay, and uh, <clears throat> so we need one condition, the condition is that this, uh, this, uh, this, T, uh, T underline gamma, this has to be uh, a lattice, okay? So, so, so that's one of the conditions which we need, okay? Then the next is um, um, about, about some multipliers, okay? So a vector, okay? So epsilon inside uh, R to the N. So this is uh, called uh, totally positive, uh, totally positive okay or uh, you did not this by epsilon okay sometimes uh, with, with this or in fact I will just use I'll just use this one okay if and only if uh, epsilon 1 is bigger than 0 epsilon 2 is bigger than 0 and so on epsilon and is bigger than zero, then what is going to happen is that, um, okay, so, uh, so if I, if I, if I pick any, a, uh, a totally positive element of Rn, okay, then, uh, a totally, uh, positive, uh, 
element epsilon of uh, uh, to the power of n. Okay, so this is uh, called uh, a multiplier. Called a multiplier of what? Of the discrete subgroup that I have. Okay, of gamma. If um, there is a b inside uh, uh, to the n, okay, such that you know this transformation, uh, such that the transformation transformation uh, epsilon is times z plus b lies in gamma. Okay, so uh, it means uh, so I, you know, I can I can write this as epsilon b zero one. Okay, so this belongs to gamma like this. Okay, so so this uh, this we have, and then the set of all multipliers. Okay, so if I have the set of all multipliers, then it's going to give me a multiplicative group of all the totally positive vectors. Yeah, so then. Uh, uh, set of all uh, uh, multipliers. Okay, so this is going to be a subgroup. Okay, of uh, the um, multiplicative group. of all uh, excuse me sir sorry yes please sir your b is inside rn no? and your gamma is a, i mean that b is not a real number no i mean it's a vector then epsilon b i mean you mean epsilon b101 comma yeah, epsilon yeah. b201 yeah. that thing yeah. okay. yes 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 okay Ah, okay, okay, sir. Yeah. So, and, and, and I'm going to denote this by lambda. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, I mean, we can see that very easily that this is the subgroup of multiplicative group of, group of all the totally positive vectors. Okay, and uh, let's, let's um, introduce this new notation of the, um, <clears throat> so we are going to denote by uh, R plus, okay. The set of uh, so this is t belonging to okay so maybe t is a bad, bad notation so maybe r uh, to r such that r is bigger than zero okay so this is the the the, the, the multiplicative group of all uh, uh, totally positive real numbers. else and then we are also going to to look at uh, n copies of this one okay um, <clears throat> now what now um, so here is this um, this result okay so here is this position okay so if uh, so let's start with uh, d bar is the underlying gamma as a lattice inside uh, Rn, okay? The, the lattice in R to the N, okay? Uh, then this lambda, so this is subgroup, okay? As we have just commented, so this one is yeah, so this inside. So this is discrete. This is discrete. Okay, and uh, it's multiplier. Okay, uh, epsilon. Okay, satisfies. Epsilon one times epsilon two and so on up to 
epsilon n equals to one. Okay, so so what does it take to prove this one? Okay, so so let me just uh, give you. Uh, okay, so um, we have to show that the intersection of gamma with uh, any compact uh, uh, subset of uh, you know. Um, uh, 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 so, 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 so that is uh, that has got only um, uh, finitely many uh, finitely many points, okay. And then, um, so, so, so for that, what we do is that we look at, uh, okay. So uh, let epsilon let's do the multiplier and then see what, okay. Uh, then I can look at, then we can look at uh, these kinds of matrices, epsilon B, uh, 0, 1, okay, which is inside, inside comma, this is by definition, and then uh, whatever that compact set lies, I can, I can, you know, translate this uh, by B, uh, B by A. Okay, and then I can I can uh, take this uh, these kinds of matrices inside that inside that compact set. Okay, so so okay so um so okay so uh so what if my translation uh, uh okay uh, enough to Look at B bounded, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, enough to look at B in a bounded set. Maybe this is better in uh, bounded set, okay. And inside that bounded set, since gamma is discrete, there will be finally many points of gamma, okay. So then this implies that gamma discrete, okay. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll then. So, so therefore, gamma discrete implies lambda discrete. Yeah. So we have to, to choose a compact subset K, and then we have to look at intersection with lambda. But there will have be there will be finally many choices only because there are only finally many choices. Only. Okay. So, uh, and then the second one is you look at this multiplication by by epsilon map. Okay, and then this is given by A being mapped to epsilon times A, coordinate wise multiplication. Okay, then um, you know that, uh, I mean, note that, okay, so important thing is to note uh, that uh, the multiplier lambda, it acts on uh, this translations. Okay, so by which I mean that I have a I have this D underline gamma to uh, D underline gamma, okay? Simply a multiplication by epsilon map. Epsilon one, A one, and so on up to epsilon N, A N, like this. Okay, now what? Now, uh, so if we take, uh, yeah, so, so because this is this is an action, I can I can look at the the restriction of M E this multiplication by by epsilon map to T bar. Okay, so then I can look at M E T underline gamma to T underline gamma like this. Okay, so so what does this mean? So so if I restrict myself to this one to T underline gamma, then this is uh, okay. A well defined map, yeah. So this implies that um, the matrix of uh, M epsilon is integral, right? So the matrix of M epsilon is integral, and then we are done. So, so, so this implies that the determinant of M epsilon, so this is inside Z. Yeah. So similarly, I can look at uh, the multiplication by epsilon inverse map. Okay. So similarly, 
determinant of multiplication by m epsilon inverse also belongs to z, but this is equal to the determinant of m epsilon inverse, yeah? So therefore, uh, the determinant of m epsilon, okay, so this is equal to plus minus one, but all the epsilon i's are positive, so this implies that I have epsilon one, epsilon two, and so on up to epsilon n is equal to one. Okay, so, um, and uh, now, is there another, is there another way to, 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 to look at, uh, to look at this uh, uh, multiplier set? Okay, so for that, we, we look at this map. So now, so next, if I look at, okay, so if I look at this map, uh, totally positive elements, okay, I know that there is an isomorphism from here to R. This is uh, the log map. Okay, then uh, I can I can try to define uh, the uh, a log map uh, component wise, okay, then this will give me that uh, the log of lambda, so this is contained inside r to the power of n, okay, where uh, I'm defining log of uh, epsilon by component wise, component wise log epsilon one, log epsilon two, and so on up to log of epsilon n, like this. Yeah, so now uh, what can I say? So now, so, so as I have seen that uh, if, if epsilon comes from lambda, then the, 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 the product is equal to one. So therefore I'm going to say that, uh, so if, um, so, or as uh, epsilon one times and so on, close to one, okay? So when I look at uh, uh, log lambda, yeah? So it, uh, it, it cannot be a lattice, okay? So it, it, it cannot have full rank. It will have rank one less than one, uh, one less than n, okay? And and why is this so? Because log lambda, so will be contained in the, um, this is so-called the trace zero hyperplane, okay? So this is contained in the in hyperplane. Okay, and so this is equal to is is it just means subspace of uh, dimension n minus one one less. Okay, it's because of this relation that when I apply log, then I'll get log of epsilon one and so on up to log of epsilon n is equal to zero. Okay, so so this implies that uh, the image of of lambda after taking the log map. Okay. So this is going to be contained inside this set V. So it's that. Let's put this condition. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so therefore, lambda will be isomorphic to yeah, so if my T has got, uh, if my gamma is isomorphic to Z raised to the power of uh, of K, then it were uh, this one may be uh, isomorphic to, uh, lambda may be isomorphic to Z raised to the power of, uh, uh, I mean, um, less than N minus one, okay? So, so from here, I know that log of lambda will be uh, free and then therefore by this isomorphism, I can say that this is also a finely generated um, abelian group and it's a lattice and then I will have this one. So it was okay. For some K, okay. but it can go up to N minus one only, right? Okay, so, uh, and for the definition of a cusp, what is what is needed is the, is the following. Once I have cusp forms, I can define what uh, um, modular filter modular forms are. Okay, so here is this definition. 
okay so uh, let I have gamma to be a discrete subgroup of uh, SL2R part of N so this is a discrete so this is a discrete uh, then gamma has cusp okay at infinity so this is a definition if number one is that uh, the translation uh, you know subgroup of uh, of gamma okay so this is isomorphic to z to the n and the second is that uh, the multipliers of of gamma isomorphic to z to the n minus one okay so in this case we say that the gamma has a cusp at infinity okay and uh, uh, how do i define uh, how do i give a meaning to cusps other than uh, other than infinity okay so it will be done through um, um, you know uh, taking taking normalizers of uh, of uh, uh, of gamma okay and uh, so so let me uh, give this as a um, so proposition okay so again i have gamma to be a discrete subgroup okay and then uh, a so uh, again as before so uh, let gamma be discrete subgroup of SL2 R to the power of N to be discrete. Okay, and then what? And uh, I have uh, an element A, which is inside uh, SL2 R to the power of N, such that, okay, uh, I'm going to say that A gamma A inverse has this infinity cusp, okay? Has uh, cusp infinity, right? Then what happens then for each B which is inside SL2 R, okay? And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that B is another element inside SL2RN, okay, such that um, A infinity, uh, A inverse applied to infinity is the same as B infinity, uh, B inverse applied to infinity. Maybe I can put a bracket around this one. Uh, with this one, okay, uh, B. Uh, the group B gamma B inverse has a cusp infinity. Okay, so this proposition is important because it will allow us to define a general uh, cusps. Okay, so for the proof, so this is uh, how do I prove? Given such a thing, how do I how do I prove? Okay, so um, we'll do this. Uh, yeah, so, so it's enough to do for the first observation is to uh, note that it's enough to do for um, A, which is given by the identity elements, because I can, you know, uh, multiply once I have such an, such an equality like A inverse infinity equals to B inverse infinity, I can multiply both sides by, by A inverse, uh, by A, okay? So then we can see that, so note that, not that it is enough to do for A equals E, E, and so on, E. Okay, E is the identity matrix. I don't want to use the I because I'm going to use, uh, reserve the, the, the I later for the automorphic factor, okay? Uh, e equals to identity matrix okay and then I have here B infinity will be equal to infinity 
okay so which means that which means that my b will look like yeah so my, my b is going to look like b of z equals to something like uh, epsilon z plus plus b okay so then so this is the computation then um t underline of this translations of b comma b inverse okay will be uh, epsilon square times the translations of gamma and uh, the multipliers of 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 b gamma b inverse remains the same as the multipliers for Okay, so so just check this, huh? So so the, the first one, please check because when I check, I was getting uh, I was getting epsilon inverse. Okay, so so, so check this, but it should be, uh, I, uh, but I guess it is epsilon square. When I was doing a calculation, I I uh, found that this is this is epsilon uh, epsilon inverse. Okay, so um, so this is a, this is just a calculation. Um, <clears throat> so. You take this B and then put here and then uh, write down wh what B is. Then you only have to calculate B comma B inverse. Okay, you start an A inside here. Yeah, so this is this is calculation. Um, okay, all right. Now. Um, so uh, what does this mean? This means that um, uh, if I want to call, if I want to have uh, to, uh, to call an element inside the uh, R bar to the n, okay, um, uh, a cusp, then uh, I should have, uh, uh, you know, I should have a matrix which takes that cusp to infinity. Okay. So 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 then so so this is. Uh, this allows us to, to define, okay, this, okay. Um, so uh, again, so let comma be a discrete subgroup of SL2 R to the power of N, okay, then gamma has cusp Kappa, okay, inside the extended reals, okay, n copies of the extended reals, uh, if and only if uh, for some um, A belongs to uh, SL2 R to the power of n, okay, uh, I have A kappa equals to infinity, okay. Um, for some with uh, with this one, uh, the group A gamma A inverse has cusp infinity. Okay, so which means that whenever uh, A gamma A inverse has cusp infinity, then um, you can you, you can say that this um, a has a cusp at, uh, at kappa, okay? So kappa will be the A inverse of, of infinity here. Okay, so let me put a word here. So with in this one, this. Okay, so uh, so here I have used the word for some, but the, the previous uh, proposition or remark will say that if I have this one, uh, this uh, for one A, then it will be true for for other um, for other B also, okay? Provided uh, A, uh, A inverse of infinity is the same as B inverse of infinity. <clears throat> okay, so this is what is, uh, what is needed, okay? Hello? Hello? Uh, sir, for a given gamma, uh, can number of cusp uh, be inf infinite also, or it will always be finite? It will be finite. It will be finite. The number of cusps, okay, it will be finite. Okay. 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 Yeah. 
So, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to set, uh, we'll see that. Okay. So, so now, so, so, so let us set here, uh, uh, H N star. Okay. To be equal to H to the N. Okay. Union. Okay. I'm, I'm going to add all the possible cusps of, of comma. Okay, so set of set of set, set of cusps. Okay, so maybe set of cusps of gamma. Okay, so then I'm going to um, say a few words about. So this is uh, a fact. Maybe uh, it's not very. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's it takes a long time to prove. Okay, so this is a fact. Okay, so. As you can see, even if I have not written gamma uh, when I write H and star, you, you should always remember that there is a gamma in the background. Okay, so um, H and star. Okay, so this this depends upon uh, this depends on uh, on gamma. Okay. Uh, so this has a topology uh, has a unique topology such that what happens uh, such that one uh, the topology induced on HN is the same. Is, is the same. Uh, okay, uh, I mean uh, is the usual one. Um, yeah. So, so so just see that uh, HN is contained inside this one. So I can talk about uh, the induced topology on HN. So it's that. The induced topology on HN. Okay. So this is the usual one which comes from the induced topology of the of cn okay and then uh uh hn okay so this is uh open <coughs> and dense in It's n star like this. Okay. And uh, so, as you can see, that the first one takes care of uh, points inside Xn, by which I mean I know how to put um, uh, open sets around points inside Xn. Okay. So, now let me, let me describe uh, how to put topology, um, you know, in the neighborhood, um, how to specify neighborhoods of the, uh, of the cusps. Okay. So, if uh, Kappa is the cusp of gamma, and I have uh, a matrix A, which is inside uh, SL2R to the power of n, okay, with A kappa equals to infinity. Then, okay, A inverse of UC. So just give me a minute. I will define what this UC is, okay? Uh, union kappa, okay? And for all, for every C, which is positive, okay, with uh, UC. So what is UC? UC is, as you know, it should be. Yeah, this is similar to the way we have done the case of elliptic modular forms. So J equals to one to N and imaginary part of, of, of uh, ZJ uh, is bigger than C. 
okay so so this forms uh, a basis okay so forms a basis for neighborhoods of of kappa okay so i'm going to take uh, a large open set uh, it's uh, 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 called UC, okay. Uh, and 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 what am I going? I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that the imaginary part is is uh, the product of the imaginary part is very big. It's bigger than C, okay. So it's it's the same thing as before that we had some we had something like this, right? If I remember correctly, okay. So we had uh, yeah. So this is. Um, the imaginary part of Z, this is C, okay? And then this, okay? The shaded portion is the neighborhood of, uh, of infinity, okay? So I'm, 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 I'm doing something similar, okay? So note that uh, my E, uh, the matrix E, uh, is taken to be a matrix inside uh, SL2R. It, it, it is not inside, inside comma, okay? So this forms a neighborhood of uh, uh, of kappa. Okay, so 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 this is uh, this result describes. Okay, so I'm not sure if we have the time to go through uh, a proof of this, but um, let's see if we have time in the in the in the discussion hour. We can we can do this. Now, uh, so we have defined what uh, 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 SL two R and action on H to the n, and then we have defined. Uh, we have also given a characterization of discrete subgroups of SL two R to the n, and we have defined what uh, cusps are. Uh, 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 okay, um, uh, and uh, we have uh, obtained this um, uh, this enlarged uh, set H n star, which consists of H n, and then uh, the cusps of of gamma. Okay. So um, now uh, there is an interesting um, lemma, which is which is which is useful when we uh, try to look at the um, the structure of um, uh, its n star uh, mod gamma. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> hmm. So maybe I should. Uh, see how e uh, how the uh, so maybe let me just write down okay so I have okay so the first one is that uh, the system of sets okay the inverse of QC and the intersection with kappa. Okay, so it does not depend. It does not depend on the choice of A. I could have taken any B, okay, choice of, uh, of A. And then uh, the second is if you would, if you look at um, the stabilizer, okay, so uh, gamma infinity. So let's denote by gamma infinity the the stabilizer. Of infinity, yeah. So this is this is going to act on uh, U C, okay. So so why is this so? So as uh, its transformation m inside okay so so what does it do i have mz equals to it looks like this okay and then with the norm of epsilon which is nothing but epsilon 1 to epsilon n equals to 1 yeah. So earlier we defined define the n, this uh, notation n. Okay. So it's 
is useful when we write down this condition, epsilon one up to epsilon n equals to one. Okay, so what is the upshot? The upshot is that Okay, uh, if k, yeah, uh, if kappa, kappa, so is cusp of, uh, uh, cusp of SL, not SL2, but of gamma, of gamma implies uh, a kappa, so this is, uh, Cusp of A gamma uh, A inverse. Okay, and this is for all A inside SL2 or N like this. Okay, now what? Now, um, so I can, I can take, sorry, I can take, uh, I can take, um, so now I can look at, so I can look at, okay, the action of gamma on uh, HN star. Okay, so, um, and uh, uh, I can look at, okay, then we can consider then I can consider. Uh, this quotient space, okay? X comma, which is equal to mod gamma. Okay, so try to think why, why, why this action, okay? It extends to its end star, okay? Uh, and then this, so, so, so here's a, uh, so, so it's it's a result of this of this line, okay? The kappa is a cusp of gamma, then uh, a kappa is another cusp of gamma, okay? So if I'm going to take uh, elements inside gamma, then it's going to extably on um, its an uh, star here, okay? And then uh, so so now I look at this at this quotient space. Okay, and then uh, you give this uh, the the quotient topology. Okay, quotient space, and then um, so equipped. Oh, wait. Quotient topology. Okay. So this is the uh, um, the generalization of uh, what we have seen in the case of uh, elliptic modular forms. Okay, and then uh, what? So so here is this, this thing. So what happens? So I want to study what happens in the neighborhood of um, of cusps. And for that, let's take. Um, so now, if I take uh, so. An A inside SL2 Rn, then I know that if I want to look at the behavior, okay, in the neighborhood of cusps, then with the help of this matrix, I can I can look at um, a neighborhood of of infinity rather, okay. So uh, uh, then, okay, the map. Uh, Okay, so here Z going to A, Z, okay. So this induces a homeomorphism. From uh, X gamma to X A gamma A inverse. Okay, and this is, uh, uh, 
or homeomorphism. Okay, and then the infinity, the kappa cusp corresponds to the um, infinity cusp here. Okay, so if I want to study, look at the, the local behavior in the neighborhood of uh, the infinity cusp gamma, then by this transformation, I can rather look at the, the neighborhood of, of infinity. Okay, and then, and then bring it back. So <clears throat> here is this. Regarding this, we have this, we have this proposition. So again, so I have gamma to be, uh, so this one is discrete subgroup of uh, SL2R or N, okay. Um, then um, this also gives us how uh, open neighborhoods of infinity look like, okay. Uh, then, um, Uh, x comma, so this is locally compact house of space. Okay, and uh, if uh, infinity is a cusp of gamma, then, okay, so, so what happens? Infinity is a cusp of gamma, then let's add infinity to this uh, open uh, neighborhood UC, okay, union infinity, all right, then, uh, I, on the other hand, I have this H and star, right? So this one, U C infinity, uh, uh, U C union infinity, okay? Along with infinity, this is going to be a subset of this one. And then the way we have defined uh, U C, remember that we took this, um, we specified one C, and then we look at the line which is above, um, uh, where the imaginary part is uh, bigger than bigger than C. Okay, so that's that's an open subgroup of uh, of H uh, of H n. Okay, and then I I added infinity to U C. Okay, and then uh, yeah, and then on the other hand I have H n star. Yeah, so if I if I look at this quotient H n star mod gamma. Okay, then I want to look at this image. Okay, but the moment I do that. Okay, if I want to get something nice, then then I look at the uh, I also mod out by its uh, by the action of uh, of the stabilizer of of the of infinity cusp. Then I have this map. Okay, so yeah, so you see you see union infinity goes inside its n uh, a star. Okay, and then uh, I want to go one step ahead, and then I want to look at. Uh, the quotient space h and star uh, mod gamma. Okay, but if I want to do that, uh, the I have to modify it by the uh, by the um, uh, by the equivalence classes inside this uh, um, yeah um, uh, open subgroup uh, uh, inside this open set. Okay, and then and then what do I know about this? Then this is uh, an open uh, embedding. Yeah, this theorem is very nice actually. It's an open embedding um, <clears throat> for uh, sufficiently large, for sufficiently large uh, C, okay? And then, uh, so if I take C large enough, then I'm going to get many uh, open embeddings for every C, okay? Uh, for large enough C, then uh, I can say that this uh, system uh, defines mm, a basis for the okay neighborhoods. Okay. Of of what? Not of, not of infinity, but of the class of infinity. Okay, of the class 
of infinity. So maybe you can go back and then compare this with the situation, what happens in the case n is equal to one. Okay, so this is uh, what one has to see. And then, um, <clears throat> so here, um, so I wish I can, I can give a proof of this one, but I'm not sure if I have the time to do that. Okay, but uh, the proof of this is going to, uh, okay, so the proof, this lemma okay the proof of this lemma needs uh, two facts okay so uh, the first one so these are all exercises the first one is that suppose I have uh, t underline okay with multiplier set Lambda. Oh, okay. So, so let me not write one here. Then one. So try and figure this out. So this is very easy. So T underline. So this is not intuitive. A R uh, to R, where I map A to A J. So this is injective okay and then the second is that uh, I have another projection to r to the n minus one here where I, 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 I forget you know one component okay so forgetting one component so this map is given by forgetting one component okay so this has dense image has dense image okay so the, so the first one uh, is very interesting so it says that the map from uh, a to aj so, so so remember that my my t underline so that's um, uh, a lattice inside uh, R to the N, and then there is no reason that when I project it down to one R that, uh, you know, the Z component, it, it, uh, that it is injective. But here it turns out to be. Okay, so this is a very striking thing. Okay, so, <clears throat> so try and uh, do this one. It's not so, uh, not so difficult. Okay, and I, so, so, so with this, I can, um, the, I, I can now try to prove the, the above uh, statement, but I'm not sure if I have the, the time to do so. And then, uh, yeah, so, so maybe I should just uh, go ahead. Okay, so, but the, <clears throat> this is maybe I can. Okay, so it needs this, uh, <clears throat> and uh, mm, now, um, so what is needed? Okay, next is to show that. Okay, so under fact. Okay, so it says that if I have two cusps, kappa, kappa prime. because of gamma okay then there exists neighborhoods okay u for kappa and u prime okay so, so this is inside h to the n star Okay, such that uh, M uh, applied on U intersection with U prime, this is not equal to MT. Okay, for 
nm inside comma implies that m kappa is equal to kappa prime. Okay, so um, this you, you you would have seen this in the case of uh, elliptic modular forms. Okay, so I, I guess this is given in the in the book by Miyake that the proof of this you just have to imitate. Okay, uh, now um, so let's let's go back to the uh, the few words about the proof of the proposition. Okay. Proof of the proposition. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, the fact that X gamma is Hausdorff. Okay, so um, this follows from the fact above. Okay, follows from uh, follows from the above fact. Okay, exactly as in the case of uh, of n is equal to one. Okay, uh, as in equals to one case. And then the second is that, um, mm, so this one, uh, so what do I have to prove here? I think I have to show that it's an open embedding, right? So, um, <clears throat> that you see unit infinity mod gamma infinity, H and star mod gamma. Okay, this is an open embedding for sufficiently large uh, C. Okay. And, and, and this happens provided infinity is a cusp of, of gamma. Okay, so this, these things are, are okay, it follows. <clears throat> what is difficult is to show that um, um, the, uh, its class of cusps has a, has a compact neighborhood. Okay, so once this, these things are there, then um, also Okay, so maybe I will add a C here and C here. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, the map, if you look at the map from HN to HN mod comma, so this is open and surjective. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, so, so it follows that my, okay. So Chandrakan, yeah. maybe, I think uh, we have a, another discussion session from four. So maybe I think- uh, Should I wind up? Yeah, probably, is that it Rupam? Like- uh, Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. So, 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 so I'll just wind up, okay? So this is open and surjective. And uh, uh, this one, uh, it's n, yeah. So over here, it's n mod gamma. So this is anyway uh, locally compact. Okay, because uh, it's the image of the of its n, which is which is locally compact. Okay. So this is just a, a flavor of the uh, uh, of the proof. Okay, and then. Um, Finally, what we have to show is that this UC union uh, infinity uh, mod gamma. So it's not just, in, it's not enough to take this UC. We have to look at uh, the closure, okay? And then we get a compact neighborhood of, uh, of, of infinity, okay? So let me just state this and then, and then, and then I'm done, okay? So here is, okay? So you 
see closer union infinity the closer will include the line okay uh, so this is compact okay okay all right so um mm, So 